The Lockheed L-1011 TriStar was a groundbreaking aircraft for its time. In the transformative decade of the 1960s, technological and engineering advancements in aviation occurred at breakneck speed. One of the innovations that came out of the race to create the biggest and the best was the Palmdale, California-built Lockheed L-1011 TriStar. Out of 250 L-1011 airframes ever built, just one remains worthy as of 2024. Known as Stargazer, the last remaining TriStar spends her days flying some pretty interesting missions. She would conclude her commercial service with Air Canada in October 1990. However, her time on the ground would be minimal as she embarked on a new journey two years later when she was delivered to Virginia-based Orbital Sciences Corporation, now part of Northrop Grumman. After substantial modifications, the TriStar was reborn as the Pegasus Air Launch Platform and renamed Stargazer in May 1992. It beat out other potential choices including the B-52 Stratofortress, the Boeing 747 and the DC-10. Stargazer Reg N140SC became the carrier aircraft for the Pegasus, the world's first privately developed orbital launch vehicle. Instead of conventional ground-based launches, the Pegasus is air-launched from the belly of the L-1011, negating the need for an expensive first-stage booster. Since its debut in California's Dryden Flight Research Center in 1990, Pegasus has achieved numerous milestones. These include being the world's first privately developed space launch vehicle and the first air-launched rocket to place satellites in orbit. Conceived in the 1960s, the Lockheed L-1011 TriStar was designed to be a technologically advanced, long-range, reliable airliner. It boasts a diverse portfolio of civilian aircraft, such as the Electra and Constellation, as well as military aircraft, such as the C-130 Hercules, the C-141 Starlifter, and the C-5 Galaxy. Lockheed was first approached by American Airlines to develop a wide-body civilian jetliner. Lockheed's aim was to produce a competitor to the other two wide-body aircraft at the time, the Boeing 747 and the Douglas DC-10. Let's learn a bit more about the L-1011 and what made it unique. The L-1011 had a seating capacity of up to 400 passengers in a twin-aisle configuration, with a range exceeding 4,000 nautical miles. It was praised for its comfort, efficiency, and safety features. A trio of three-spool Rolls-Royce RB211 engines powered the L-1011, a distinctive feature that set it apart from the DC-10. While Douglas opted for a third engine mounted above the fuselage for economic reasons, the L-1011 featured an innovative S-duct airline embedded in the tail and upper fuselage. This design reduced drag, improved stability, and lowered the empty aircraft weight. Other technologically advanced features aboard the TriStar included Autoland capabilities, an automated descent control system, lower deck gallery, and lounge facilities. Following its maiden flight on November 16, 1970, Eastern Airlines took delivery of the first L-1011 on April 26, 1972. Despite its technological superiority over the DC-10, the L-1011 faced several challenges during production. The program, initiated on orders from TWA and Eastern Airlines, experienced delays due to issues with engine manufacturer Rolls-Royce. The TriStar launch was postponed by a year, allowing the DC-10 to take the lead. Originally conceived as a jumbo twin, the decision to use three engines was driven by the need for sufficient thrust to take off from existing runways. Additionally, regulatory restrictions existed on twin-engine jets throughout the 1980s. These regulations prohibited the operation of flights more than 30 minutes from the nearest suitable airport. This made transoceanic operations impossible for twin-engine jets at the time. Despite these challenges, the L-1011 program produced 250 airframes between 1968 and 1984. Production ended in 1982 with the 250th unit falling short of the 500 needed for Lockheed to break even. Lockheed withdrew from the civilian airline business after this setback. This paved the way for other competitors like the DC-10, 747, and MD-11 to capture the long-haul market in the late 1980s and early 90s. By this time, however, twin-engine aircraft like the Boeing 777 were superior to the inefficient three-engine behemoths. Even still, the old L-1011 boasted a relatively safe track record 
with only one fatal accident attributed to a problem with the aircraft. Delta Airlines was the type's largest operator before its retirement in 2001. Internationally, Cathay Pacific acquired 21 TriStars from bankrupt Eastern Airlines, retiring them in 1996. TWA bid farewell to the L-1011 in 1997. The last airline to operate it was American Transair, which ceased operations in April 2008. With the demise of ATA, the sun set on the life of the venerable TriStar. Like many majestic aircraft in recent years, the L-1011 TriStar has slowly faded into the sunset. Luckily, its legacy is preserved with the Stargazer for now. From its role as a mid-century wide-body competitor to a vehicle that blasts rockets into space, this last airworthy TriStar is a living dichotomy of the golden age of aviation and the modern marvels of space age technology.